The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. Marketing, and I'm super excited to have one of the marketing and broadcasting geniuses of Alaska. His name is Buddy Bailey. He's been in the broadcast, in, or not broadcast industry, he's been on TV since he was, I would say, seven years old. So he's got a huge background of broadcast and editing and being a publisher on TV. So I, I just want to introduce him and let him come on this show again. This is the second time he's been on the show. If you have not listened to the first show, it is the second episode on Burt Phone Marketing uh, Radio. And he talks about how publishing is scary and how it could be hard, but how he overcame at the age of seven. So, buddy, welcome back to the show. I'm super excited for you to be here. Thanks for taking the time out. Awesome, man. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. No problem. And look at this. You're driving. You're, you're driving in on, you know, you're, you're going to another meeting. You just launched a, a, a really cool platform. And, you know, I kind of want to actually have the audience know exactly what you're doing now, because I know you made a shift and then you made another shift. But a little bit. Actually, can you talk about the, the shift that you made and then what you're doing right now? Because I'm, I'm excited for the yeah. audience to see what exactly you got going on. Yeah, I appreciate that. So. Um... Two years ago, a couple partners and I, you know, I was in the financial industry, uh, been in the industry for six years. Uh, two years ago, I started. We lost you for a minute. Right. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Two years ago, you started. All right. Sorry about that. So two years ago, I started an HR company. Um, I was working in the financial industry and uh, I started to see a need with all of the business owners that I was talking to. Every time I sat down with somebody, I'd say, you know, what are your pain points in your world? And, you know, sometimes they would say it was finances or sometimes they would say I need a 401k and things that I was doing in my, uh, my former life. But what I heard from every single guy was two things is I need help with my HR and payroll, and I need help with my marketing. And every single time you start seeing patterns of this and that and the other. So I called up a friend of mine and I said, listen, I got a wild hair idea. What if you and I opened an HR company that did um, HR, payroll, and benefits administration and safety administration? And he goes, well, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, I've been in the industry for 25 years and I've been looking for something new to do. Um, so anyhow, so he and I started that two years ago. Well, um, you know, it's grown and grown and grown. Well, over the last six, seven months, it's really taken a turn to where, you know, we manage right at 500 employees and we're continuing to grow, adding somewhere around 150 to 250 employees over the next two, uh, three months as kind of things uh, progress here. Um, so it's been a really great great run. So I went full time two months ago into uh, managing that company and helping it grow. So we've got some big things we're working on. Well, I always said, like, even in the first interview, I said everything that you touch is gold. But I want to actually bring back to the to the audience, kind of, kind of get your feet wet, but actually interview your customers and find a need. And then literally, uh, an ask campaign that says, you know, what's your biggest pain point? And then what I really like about it, and you know, I'd love the audience to kind of take notes on this is you found a couple pain points and then you offered a solution. And 
So you're bringing more value to the clients that you currently have as, as far as making better relationships. And now you're creating more value with the, with the group that you're doing right with the business that you're doing right now. So man, I commend you for doing that, for finding a need for actually asking and not just saying, Oh, this is what the, this is what the market needs. You kind of went to your clients, good clients and said, how can I serve you even better? And you found a way. Yeah. It's uh, you know, what's been interesting about it. I appreciate uh, your comments there is, um, you know, a big thing in the sales world and, you know, as a financial advisor, you're definitely selling yourself, right? You got to sell yourself and sell the different things that you're doing. Um, and that's in most industries, right? In most industries, in some way or another, you're selling either your company or yourself to some extent, right? But the best, best, best salespeople that are out there, period, that you find, you go look around, they're very selfless and they listen, right? Mm -hmm. the, the best sales guys, they, they want to help at the core of everything. They want to help their client. And that's when you truly find good solutions for your clients, right? So they want to find that. And then they listen, right? Ask a good question. And what I always tell guys is you just got to shut up and listen. Let your client tell you what their pains are. Let them tell you what they need, right? So out of that, it, you have to start deciphering that and where you can go next. Is it a new solution? Is that something I need to outsource and so on and so forth, right? So what we've built, so I own Focus Employer Solutions. I have two partners with me that we're growing this thing together. Um, but Focus Employer Solutions is the company that we have. We have it built in such a way that I can walk into any business owner at this point, and if they need help with HR payroll and benefits, I can help with that. If they need help with safety for a construction company, if they've got OSHA training and different things that they need to do, I can help with that. If they need help with their marketing through different connections that I have, guess what? I can help with that. I know my boy Eric Sablon can rock and roll on the online marketing. I've got guys in the TV world. We've got everything that they need for those pieces. Uh, some of the things that we're building in right now we're really excited about is on-site training. So one thing that I have always felt is a lost art for any retail businesses that are out there right now is hospitality training. I mean, mm -hmm. we live in a world where people take for granted that clients walk in a door. I don't have to go get them because my company advertised for me and I'm, they become what I call just an order taker. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not a good salesperson. I really don't care whether you're here or not, but I need a paycheck. So if you walk through the door, blah, blah, blah. So we want to offer, we're researching some really good training programs right now for offering hospitality training, management training, sales training, all sorts of different things that we can help businesses in our community be better. Yeah. So I really like um, what you said. There's differentiating yourself and listening because in our space, in the MLM space, everybody is selling kind of the same thing. So when someone joins your team, they join you as a salesperson, as a leader, as a per, as, as, you know, as an upline, they join you. So, you know, question to the audience what are you doing to differentiate yourself what are you doing to to listen better to your clients what are you doing to take the client and say you know what you could join here or you could join there and i like what you said about that is you're differentiating yourself and you're listening because the customer is going to take you down a path that's going to answer their questions as long as you're answering asking the right questions and like you said just listening kind of shut up for a little bit listen to what they're doing listen to what they're saying and listen for their pain points. Because if you're solving a solution or solving a problem with your solution, then you're the only solution. So yep. I, I like what you said about that. And I'm really excited about your, the concept that you have, because you're going really full bag. You started off with, you know, a need in marketing and not, not even marketing, but in, in, um, in, in HR and health and benefits, but now you're moving. So you know what? Hey, not only do we have HR benefits, but I have a marketing arm that I can help you with. I can at least connect you to. And then I also have, we're working on some sales training and some hospitality, which is a big deal because like you said, the, the art of sales 
is very, there's some really good salespeople and then there's everybody else. And yep. that is definitely, there's a lot of clerks out there. So, you know, I'm glad you're, you're filling that need and I'm um, really looking forward to seeing what, what you come out with because, you know, I'll be a client. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. We've got a lot of things that we're working on and uh, um, actually a couple of things go right. We'll be in the entire Pacific Northwest over the next uh, six months here as, uh, as a couple of things progress that we're working on. And uh, it, it'll be exciting for sure. Well, when you hit the Pacific Northwest and then you move a little bit more south, you definitely have a, have a good arm and a good uh, foundation to keep pushing and moving forward and working through some of those prospects down there. That's so awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So on your transition from what you were doing before um, financial planning to this um, new endeavor that you're on, you, you know, you took, you already, you know, you were kind of working both for two, two years. What, what was your biggest aha moment when you were like, you know what, this is the time when I'm going to actually take this new endeavor to the next level. Well, you and I have talked a lot over the past that, you know, that, um, I'm a believer and kind of my, my foundation for who I am and my life is, is in Christ. So for me, a lot of the, the things in my world are driven off of sometimes me asking God for advice and sometimes God just pushing me off a cliff and saying, you're going to go do this or that or the other, right? <laughs> so I've got a men's group that I'm a part of in the Valley that we meet every Friday morning and um, it's pretty neat. We've got six business owners in our group. And we all meet and uh, we pray and, and we talk about our businesses. We talk about our life. So, you know, one little extra tidbit is um, my dad always told me growing up, you are, the, uh, you are the average of your closest five friends. I've mm -hmm. always wanted that to be a very high average. And I want that. I want to be the lowest end of that average, right? That's probably not fair to everybody else, but I want to be the low end where I'm gleaning wisdom from other guys all the time. So. If listeners out there don't have a group of people they can fall on and trust as mm -hmm. wisdom dealers in their life, you really need to find that. Figure out who your closest five friends are and go create a morning group. Go create something that encourages you to be better life in your business and whatever it is. So anyhow, so we need every... Uh, um, every Friday morning and talk about a lot of different stuff. Well, anyhow, we talk about all the time because we're all go-getters. We all want to go do this. We want to go do that. And sometimes God's looking at us saying, hey, hit the brakes and focus on this one thing right now, right? And sometimes it's hard to read what that is between the different things. So what we talk about all the time is, you know what actually we'd like to see is, is if, if God would close a door you know how a lot of people mm. think in terms of hey hey if this is where you want me to go open this door but we get a lot of doors open to us right i get a lot of people saying hey do you want to do this hey do you want to do that and more than anything i kind of need god to close a door and say hey no i don't want you to go there no i don't mm -hmm. want you to go there all right this door is still open go rock and roll <laughs> right? right and that's kind of how i take it so anyhow what kind of happened in my world was a one door closed in my world and left the focus employer solutions door so wide open and so dialed that we we're just going, well, I think God is saying it's absolutely time to rock and roll and build focus employer solutions the way that we wanted. Um, so anyhow, that's really the reality of what's happened there in that transition is, is, uh, I, I, uh, I was really excited, really scared about the transition um, because, man, for the last six years, I did one thing, and this is wildly different than what I was doing, at least from a day-to-day -day standpoint, and uh, it's been a really great transition. I'm excited about it, that's for sure. 2020 is going to be a huge year for us, and uh, it's really exciting to know what's coming down the pike for us. Well, yeah, 2020 looks like it's going to be a good year for a lot of people, and um really i i don't know if the listeners understand how important that five that group of five is because i always ask myself this 
you're the, like you said, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with income, um, spiritually, financially, um, yeah. physically. A lot of times if you, if you work out with, if you, if you have a friend that all five of you go to the gym, guess what? Most of you guys are in shape. <laughs> If, yes. you have a, uh, yeah. if you have friends that hit Friday TGIF and can't wait till happy hour, <laughs> then you're going to have can't wait till happy hour body. But yep. yeah, that is a huge nugget. That is a huge nugget to actually inventory your five people that you're with. And like you said, and that's why I'm, I'm on, the, on this call with you and on the Zoom and I, I totally respect you is um, I want to reach up to the people that are above me. So I definitely have you in one of my five groups. So th th thank you for taking the time out for me. I, I really appreciate oh, it. Thanks. Thanks. You always have my time. That's for sure. Anytime. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So the last thing, uh, you know, cause we had you on the podcast before you kind of told your backstory about publishing. Um, what, what I want to ask you right now is, you know, what is it that, that you're, that you're, that you see in the next six months, that you're really taking action on that you could kind of tell the the audience say you know what focus on this in any business anything that you're doing and these this two tips will help you um, accelerate your business and scale I, I just spoke with a friend of mine um, this just popped into my head I actually didn't know what I was going to say when you just asked that and and a friend of mine I was just talking with him yesterday it was the day before yesterday and he got back from San Diego down there at this conference he was at. And what we were talking about was how sometimes we get so many ideas of how we can market. There's a lot of ways to market right now. There, I mean, you've got your Instagram, you've got your click funnels, you've got your traditional TV, you've got your radio, you've got magazine articles, you've got... Uh, um, I mean, the list goes on, right? I mean, there's so many ways right now to market your business. What we were talking about was he goes, man, there were so many good ideas passed back and forth that I feel frozen. I'm not where to, sure where to start. Where do I go, right? So we kind of get, we have this tendency that we get so overwhelmed sometimes by so many different things we can do that we don't do any of them. Or we want them to be done so well that we go, man, I really want to get good at it before mm -hmm. I go do it. So people don't think that I'm chintzy or don't think I'm not quality or anything like that. Listen, I will take all day long a reduction in quality for the value of the practice that I get in becoming mm -hmm. better at something, right? So two pieces that he and I talked about is start something Focus on one thing that will get you the farthest forward in marketing your business. I don't care what it is. And then from there, don't worry about not being very good at it. It's going to take time. It takes time to get really, really good at some of these things. So just focus on doing it, making it happen, and continuing forward. Because if you just sit there and say, well, I will do this when I'm better, or we've always got a reason why we wait off. It just never mm -hmm. comes. We never do it and it never is going to happen. So there's my little tidbit I'd say for what to do the rest of this year. And if I had it my way, I'll tell you this is everybody, if you wanted the cheapest, fastest, most direct way to get to either consumers or business owners, it's really click funnels. There's a lot of guys out of there out there right now doing it. I'm starting to see it on Facebook. I'm starting to see it on Instagram all over the place. So there's now that new, like you mentioned earlier, how do you differentiate yourself? So mm -hmm. there's a new element of a year ago, there was a few, few people doing click funnels, right? Mm -hmm. You start to have a lot of people on click funnels now. So you do have to be good about differentiating yourself somehow, but man, everybody's on Facebook everybody's on Instagram. It is the place to be. And how do you get to those guys? It's using click funnels, man. You get in front of them, you get their information and your follow up is key and you're going to find clients. So anyhow, there's my uh, quick tidbit for the day. So I like, so I, I just want to like recap for the audience. A lot of times we do something called paralysis by analysis. And that's Absolutely. what buddy talked about. He, he talked about, you know, just get it done. 
And in 2019, I, I have a good friend of mine that kind of is very, very um, structured and he wants it to be perfect, just like Buddy said. And I'm more of the go getter. So I, I tell him, bro, done is the new perfect. Let's get some leads. Let's get something out there. Let's get something that's going so that way we can analyze it and say, you know what, that was a bad idea or this one worked out or this didn't create leads or there's a bottleneck here. You got to test it. You got to test the market and see what the market says. And going back yep. all the way back to, to Buddy at the beginning when he said, for two years, he interviewed people and found a solution. That's exactly what you're doing, except with marketing, you have to do it. You have to do it first, but then you have to actually analyze what's going on. If you have a bottleneck in your funnel, you have a bottleneck in your sales process and you don't know that it's a bottleneck, then you're never going to be able to fix it. So always, 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 after every sales call, I always take a listen, plan, do, review. I review what happened. Like, did I say something incorrect? If I said something wrong, is there something that I could, can I go back and talk to him about it? Or, you know, can I get another meeting? Can I just say, you know what? I know we're not going to do business. But here's why, because I didn't listen to you and I didn't do this. And a lot of times just being humble and telling my client that he'll come back and do business with you. I'll tell you, tell you another thing to kind of add in there, right? So over these last two years and then now working, doing this full time in my business, um, what's interesting about it is, you know, I came from a world in our financial industry from a Fortune 100 company that had every piece of sales material you could ever possibly want. I mean, it was so dialed that you walk in and you've got any piece of material you need. Well, in our business, we're not 150 years old, right? So we have to create our sales processes. We have to create all of these different things. So, you know, I could sit in my office and say all day that, well, I don't really have a sales process. I don't have sales materials. I don't have these different things. So I really don't want to go sit with clients yet because I don't know what I'm doing. Nope. Not going to happen. I'm going to go mm -hmm. sit in front of them. I'm going to tell them what we're doing. And if they need sales materials of some sort, I'm just going to go make it then. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn from every single time I'm sitting in front of somebody that, that, you know what, that last time I just talked about this with them and they didn't seem to respond very well, or that's not what they want to hear about. Right. And uh, you're, I'm constantly, it's been interesting coming from a world where all of my sales materials were made for me. It's been mm -hmm. interesting going back to a world where my sales process is built by yours truly, me. <laughs> and, and it's built every single time I'm in front of somebody by adding or changing something to ensure that I'm providing value and uh, ensure that I'm being efficient with their time. The last thing a business owner wants to do or somebody that wants to be a client maybe is sit there for two hours and have me mm -hmm. talk their ear off and receive zero value. So we want to be efficient with their time, provide really good value and make sure that when they walk out of a meeting with us, they're going, man, that was a really good process. I really would like to work with these guys. Right. So. Right. Man, those are good nuggets, man. I, you know, we're coming up on a, uh, we're coming up on about 25, 30 minutes. So I just want, like I said, like we're being efficient with everybody's time. Is there any last notes, last nugget, one, any last nuggets that you would give to someone starting out, starting out right now and just saying, you know what, um, I transitioned from here and I'm going to hear one nugget that you'd give to them that says, you know what, um, this is going to help you go. Um, it kind of depends on what they're doing, I guess. So like if somebody is in any sort of sales position or wanting to promote their product or business owner, whatever it is, um, don't undervalue the, uh, or don't undermine the value of doing something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like we talked about earlier, the paralysis of analysis, just do something. The more your name is out there, the more that people know you exist and the more that people see you. What I used to say is, love you or hate you, you want them to remember you is the, is the real deal there. So if you're in front of people a lot, you're making things happen, whether you're driving them nuts or not, they're going to remember you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. We had a, you know, this is going back eight, nine years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. Now we had a Bailey's furniture commercial for click clack sofas. I, I, I bet you remember it, man. 
it was so annoying because the entire commercial was just click clack click clack blah, 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 you know and this obnoxious music and i am not kidding you when i was at bailey's i had one of two responses i never had anybody in the middle ever I had somebody come in and say, I absolutely loved that commercial. Or people would come in and said, that was the dumbest, most annoying commercial I ever heard. But guess what? They were You're in here. my store telling me about it, <laughs> right? And they were buying a click clack. So guess what? It worked. So anyhow, so the point is do something, be in front of people at all times in some manner. I love that. That's actually what Grant Cardone says, be omnipresent, be everywhere. And Russell always, Russell Brunson always says that too. He says, po be polar, po be, create polarization. So like Buddy said, people are going to love it or they're going to hate it, but nine times out of 10, they're going to remember it. And that's the key yep. to marketing is making an impression on the customer, making an impression on the prospect, making an impression on the client on why you're different and why you're here. So guys, I just want to say thank you, buddy, for coming on. Guys, make sure you listen to the full outro. Like I always do, we always talk about giving massive value. I always want to give you something. So make sure you listen to the full outro. And I will see you on the next episode of Burnt Phone Marketing Radio. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to rate and subscribe. I know it's hard to find people to pitch or talk to when your warm market dries up. So what do we do? When I first got started, I took off like most of you did. Then you started to get that feeling of being that guy. Me too. So to help you from hitting that brick wall, I've created a summit with the top 10 network marketing professionals for you. 100% complimentary. Yes, it's free. I want to start off by building an amazing relationship with you. So no matter if you've been in the industry for years or you just got started, this summit is for you. So go to www.burnphonemarketing.com and get your complimentary network marketing summit. Again, that's B-U-R-N-T-P-H-O-N-E marketing.com and get access to this phenomenal summit. There you are gonna find three keys to building a solid network marketing business. Number one, belief. Number two, strategy. And number three, action. So to get access, go to www.burnphonemarketing.com and get your complimentary network marketing summit. Again, that's burnphonemarketing.com.